It's Brian Preston, the money guy. Now, I think, Brian, one of the things I think that would be valuable for us to hit on is there is a lot of misinformation out there about downturns and about how bad market crashes are. Because I think we've all heard the story of someone who said, oh, man, I lost everything Yeah. and, and the dot-com bubble burst, or I lost everything in the Great Recession, or I lost everything... And in reality, what happened is they did not lose that money because of the market. They lost the money because of their behavior, right? They made a decision that caused them to be in that place over the long term. Um, I won't go on too long, but I, I feel like every time I took a certification exam in my life, it's almost like there was a plant sitting that they put at the desk next to me. Because I remember when I sat for the CPA exam, the guy to the right of me, I was like, hey, it's my first CPA exam, you know, and he's like, Oh, I've been here four times. And you're like, oh my gosh, oh no. you've been here. And I remember when I took my CFP exam, you know, it was not just one, it was a person on my left and a person I'm like, oh man, we're on our second, third, fourth time. I mean, they, they, they always, there's a cautionary tale of how many times. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, did they put this person here to just tell me how scary this journey was going to be? I feel like. That is what the financial media does. I feel like that's what happens when we have poor relatives mm -hmm. that are telling us how the world is just against you. Yep. There's all these people that are whispering in your ear, you can't do this. Mm -hmm. And I want to tell you, guys, that you can make it through market crashes. Mm -hmm. You can make it through economic downturns. You can make it through volatility. And we're going to show you, you can make it even if you're the absolute worst investor in history. So let's talk about the truth about market crashes and how to prepare for those by looking at exactly what you said, Brian, the world's worst investor. All right. So let's assume that you started investing in 1980 and the average income in 1980 was $12,513. That was the average income in the United States. And let's say, because you know that you're a financial mutant and you're a huge fan of the Money Guy show, uh, you are going to save 25% of your gross income. So you're going to save $260.70 per month starting in 1980. But let's say that you're not the best market timer. As a matter of fact, let's go a step further and say you are the worst market timer out there. And so what you're going to do is you're going to save your cash, right? You're, you're one of those people who say, you know what? I'm going to wait for an opportunity and I'm going to save every month. I'm going to save my $260. I'm going to have it go to cash and I'm going to pick a day that I think is the best day to start investing and I'm going to do it. I'm going to, all that cash I've accumulated, I'm going to invest on that day. And so I'm going to invest on August 25th, 1987. Well, I look at it. The narrative is you always hear buy low, sell high. Sure. This is your typical, you know what? I'm going to go with the season of how the news media is telling me things are right now. So you're getting so hyped up with all the free money that this horrible investor is actually going to wait until the market's got them all frothy and yep. hyped up. Like, yeah, yeah, get in there, get in there, free money, <laughs> free money. So you take all your cash that you diligently say and put it in. And then the very next mm -hmm. day after you put that money in, it goes bad yep. really quick, and it freaks out this person so much that they once again go, you know, uh, fool me once. I'm going to start saving my cash again, and then they repeat the same mistake mm -hmm. again, meaning they wait for it to get frothy, and then they go and invest at the world's worst time again. So you think that this person can't get out of their own way. There's no way this person could potentially or even possibly be successful in the long term. Guys, Wait until you see how this turns so out. So they invest on Black Monday and in 1990, right around the Kuwait War and at the top of the dot-com bubble bursting and immediately preceding the housing crash and the Great Recession. And then they even invest in January pre-COVID, January 17th of 2020. Well, what you can see is that as we're walking through this illustration, uh, if you're out there on iTunes or iHeartRadio, you can see that this little orange area builds up and then they invest. And then That's it builds the up and they invest again. It builds up and they invest. But what we have overlaid behind them is just the S&P 500, just a nice, easy representation of the broad stock market. And what you can see is that after, uh, what is that, Brian? A 40-year timeline, a 40-year working career of just making awful decisions, but staying consistent and continuing to invest, even being the worst market timer possible, they would have invested 
$127,000 over their career, and their portfolio would be worth $1,080,786. I think that's so powerful because there's a lot of podcast listeners out there, too. You don't get to see the visual. But what this shows is there is, once again, it's that walk up the mountain mm-hmm. with yo-yo that, yes, there are some peaks and valleys yep. in the short term where this the, the market's going up. This poor person, Daniel chose the name Ursula because <laughs> we all know Ursula is the villain, the villain yep. in, in, in the Disney Little Mermaid. But Ursula was falling victim here, but our anti-hero villain actually turned out to be a success story Absolutely. because – even if you're the worst market timer in history, that you wait until it gets frothy and you, you buy. So I'm telling you, even if you're one of these people, and a month after we've published this video, the market goes into another downturn or recession, if you will just stay the course, guys, mm-hmm. it's going to work out. Just like it did for Ursula, you too can be the worst market timer and still turn out to be a success story in the long term. You've heard us say this over and over and over and over again. And Ursula here is a prime example that when it comes to investing, when it comes to building wealth, when it comes to compound interest, when it comes to your army of dollar bills growing, it is more about time in the market than timing the market. You have to be there. Because here's what Ursula didn't do. She didn't say, oh man, you know, I blew that one. I'm not going to invest anymore. No. Oh man, I'm just going to go to cash. And I'm going to start doing CDs. Oh man, this, this investing thing is for everyone else. It, just her act of being consistent turned her into a millionaire over her working career. 